good afternoon. I first want to thank the organizing committee, Jane Hillsburg, for the European Hydration Institute, and uh, also Ron for taking the chair of this interesting session. And I was talked uh, to talk about uh, hydration and physical activity, so I changed a bit the, um, the title of my presentation and trying to be provocative. I don't know if I'm going to, to be um, effective with this, but I first thought that it would be good to, to think about what is already known uh, in regarding um, hydration and sports. There is a lot being done in the last 30, 40 years. And, and also to spend the last minutes of what is being done now and what we should go on in, with the research. So uh, this, um, this slide, I already produced this slide. I hope this is correct. No. Oh, this. what is the, the pointer? There is no pointer. Oh, OK. Well, maybe this way. <laughs> um, Well, I produced this slide already in 2006, uh, so there, there was already in 2006 and before most of the things I'm going to tell first, a consensus in uh, people working in sports physiology that uh, hydration is uh, something very, very important during uh, physical activity in sports and a lot of uh, research has been done, thank you for that, uh, which would be the ideal beverage, yes, uh, regarding sports. We have to say, Afterwards, we will see what is ideal because even sports is, and physical activity, as they could be very, very different. So, for sure, the beverage has to have water, a, a certain amount of carbohydrates, electrolytes, a specific temperature, taste, and caffeine. Mostly here, performance in the heat. And I was, uh, and just like I was telling, there is still a consensus about that because. Uh, there is now very recently this position stand from the American College of Sport Medicine. There is uh, some other reviews published in the literature. Oh, I only brought some of them. And also from our chair, there, is, there are some reviews published uh, last year and uh, uh, updating some of the aspects. But even if there is uh, some, um, uh, for sure, always some new aspects, most of the there is still a consensus of, of what hydration and sport should be. So the idea of my presentation was first to see why, why the beverage should contain all these things. And firstly, would talk about water, why water when doing sports. And this is mainly because of thermoregulation during exercise, as you remember. And I don't, uh, very briefly, would like to, that we, re, uh, simply think about that when we are performing sports, and if it's more intense, then it's even more, we are producing heat. Now our working muscle is producing heat, and while we are running or doing sports, we have to, our body has to lose this heat. So uh, we, from most, if it's around already 16 degrees centigrade in the, uh, the when we are performing sports, we always start uh, sweating quite high. If it's hotter, like 20 or 30 or even more degrees, the, high, the higher the temperature, the, then we more the sweating. Because our body has also not, can only lose the heat we are producing, but if it's outside very hot, we also can get uh, heat from the outside. So for, it's really a challenge for our body to perform when, uh, and do sports when it's really hot outside. From the four mechanisms we have to lose heat, well, yes, from the four mechanisms we have, this is radiation, convection, conduction, and sweet evaporation, the, the most important is sweet evaporation during sports by difference. If we take the numbers, and this is, here I think it's very clear, if we take the numbers, at rest, so this is like while sitting here, more or less, evaporation is only t has, uh, accounts for 20% of the kilocalories we are losing. But doing sports, it comes up to 80% of the heat that we are producing and we must lose in order not to get too hot because you know that our body cannot work, cannot live if, it, if our internal heat is more than 41 degrees centigrade. 
So we have the, our body has to do this challenge to be competitive, to do the sports, and to and maintain more or less an uh, adequate temperature. So this is then this is the reason why sweating is so important during sports. There are a lot, not a lot of studies published, and as I told you in the last years regarding this aspect, this is one slide uh, from a, like a summary of that. If we do sport for, and here for, for example, running at a moderate intensity uh, for two hours, you can see that first the temperatures, uh, if we take two trials, one without fluid intake, and the other one with fluid intake, we see that for the first 60 minutes, more or less, the, temper the rectal temperatures is increasing. But at some point, there is quite a difference. If we don't take any fluids, then the, re the temperature goes up. But if we are drinking enough, then we can moderate this temperature and it will not increase anymore. So here it's very clear that at some, at least, after 60 minutes of exercising in the heat, if you don't take any fluid, you're, you're entering in a risk of having a, a heat cramps or even to die uh, of a heat disorder. This is a, a very um, describing slide how uh, while exercising in the heat, also you can lie down on the beach if it's very hot, you also can have a heat stroke by exercising at the end. If you don't, uh, if you don't uh, drink enough, you could start with heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and even you can die from a heat stroke. So, uh, and this is described. Unfortunately, every year some people practice in sports uh, in the heat and who don't drink enough, and, and sometimes even if they have a heart problem, a cardiovascular disease, they, they have the risk of having a heat stroke. So this means that water balance in physically active people is even different than we just heard from Professor Gellert. Yes, because you are, we're talking about even four liters per day, but these were people without exercise. So if we take now the numbers and we, and we think, okay, here we, we had two, uh, 2.5 liters per day in this uh, slide with our water balance. But this is really without sweating. In the moment we start sweating, this balance uh, starts to disbalance, and then we start to sweat. So the balance, I couldn't do this correctly, but no. But if we, it would, and then we have to equilibrate the balance by drinking even more. So I always like to say that water balance in physically active people is different than water balance in sedentary people. This is, and because sweat makes the difference. So there are a lot of factors influencing sweat rate, and I cannot go very deeply into all of them, but it's clear that when we talk about sports, sport is very different here, type of exercise. It's not the same to play soccer or hockey or to go for a run, so sport is quite different. So we have to take this into account. The intensity can be different, age and gender make an, make an effort, the temperature, also humidity make an effort, the acclimatization, how long you have been here. Those who just arrived now to Madrid, probably they feel more cold if they come from a warmer environment than people already coming from a colder environment just to Madrid. So acclimatization is always an issue, also very important when practicing sports. So sweating rate is, you have to calculate it in, in the, taken into account in, in a lot of factors. These are only mean data from some, uh, how much you can sweat practice in sports. For sure it can depend on the sport and also on the individual because we know that sweating rates are very individual, we do not sweat the same. So it can came up from maybe two liters during a soccer match or even more than nearly two liters per hour while running. So it depends very much, but you can say, imagine if we can sweat two hours, two liters per hour, and we go for a run for three hours, this is possible for in a, during a marathon, for example, you lose six liters of body water by sweat. So this makes a lot of 
the difference isn't a big effort for our body. So there is a, this is also a very classical slide, and there is, and uh, that when we talk about losing body water, we have to take into account both aspects. I will, I, that's why I put also this title because I think. Uh, sometimes when um, uh, doing research in sports, sometimes you forget the health aspect. So I think you have to look at performance and you have to look at health. There is quite a consensus that when already if you lose 2% of your body water, you, have a, uh, you can have a less performance around 20%. So the way you get dehydrated, you, are, you can perform less. So that's the reason why normally we try that when do people practice in sports don't have more than two not are not uh, more than two percent dehydrated and um, there are a lot of uh, physiological uh, um, well there are uh, um, consequences when starting to be dehydrated. We just saw that you can have a heat stroke, but before that, only with 2% of dehydration, you can al already start noting, for example, that cardiac out on cardiac output, on blood volume, on sweating rate, you can have gastrointestinal distress. So there is a lot of factors already going on with only 2% of dehydration. And this, for sure, can have negative health consequences and also on performance. There is not, um, well, maybe I can say this later, but that there are several classical studies analyzing this aspect and they say that only when with 80% of the body water you can maintain the cardiac output. So you should only lose this 2%. So to coming to the next aspect, why carbohydrates? I want to do this very briefly. It's clear that carbohydrates are crucial when practicing sports because you need glucose for the nervous system, we just saw this, and also for the muscle cell. So the, for obtaining energy to, to, for the working muscle, and if the intensity, the, more, the higher the intensity, you more, you more you need the glucose. So it's very, very important that at some point, if the exercise takes long, you have to drink with the beverage carbohydrates because we have our um, glucagon, uh, glycogen um, uh, stores are very limited, as I will show you now. So there are many reasons why we need to eat a lot of carbohydrates during the day and also why drinking carbohydrates during sports. This is only one slide to show you that how limited are our glycogen stores in comparison, for example, to the fat stores in our body. So we more or less, we, if we only would have our glycogen stores uh, to perform exercise, we could not do more than, we could not exercise for more than 2,000 calories. So this is the reason why if the exercise takes long time, we need to drink carbohydrates with a, with a beverage. I will pass this. Why 6 to 8 percent? This was uh, here in, in the first slide. Well, there are a lot of studies that have been performed to know more or less how many, how, how many carbohydrates should be in the beverage. And there is now quite a consensus that the, the best concentration for carbohydrates is around 6 to 8 percent in the, in the, in the beverage. This is one of the, um, the experiments that has been performed already some years ago, but there are many studies in the same sense that drinking a beverage with carbohydrates and also with electrolytes can make the difference, talking about performance, when it comes to the end, when it comes to win, no? because this is the important aspect when you do competitive sports, to win at the end. So the difference between drinking water and drinking a, a carbohydrate and electrolyte beverage makes the, the difference is that probably you have more chances to do the last sprint and to, to win at this. Another important aspect also is that while you are getting depleted with, carbo, with glycogen, so you are using the glycogen and the glucose to get energy for performance, 
the perceived exertion increase. This means that you feel tired. Athletes who get depleted of glycogen feel more tired, so this affects the nervous system. And we also know that it's very, very important to have also the mental function working to also to, to, to win. And there are some experiments also very interesting in the literature. This is one of them. Analyzing the, 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 the mental aspects of performance. This is with uh, basketball players. They did, um, they did the training sessions with them. Then they gave them a carbohydrate beverage and also a placebo. And they, and they did them several tests. And they saw that mental performance was, and cognitive function was much better when they drank the beverage with carbohydrate than when they only get the placebo. So it's clear that carbohydrates also improves the functioning of the nervous system towards the end. Again, because it's very important to win the match. So this can make the difference of drinking only water or drinking a beverage with carbohydrates. Why to drink also a beverage with carbohydrates just when you finish sports or when you finish to be physically active because I'm always saying sports but maybe you go, you ride, you take the bicycle and ride for one hour for going to, to your job. So this can also be enough. Because a muscle glycogen resynthesis is highest just when you stop doing sports. When you stop during the first 90 minutes, the, the activity of the enzyme of glycogen synthetase is the highest. So this is also the reason why just when you finish doing sport, it's important to eat or to drink carbohydrates. Why I say drink? Because when you finish sports, most of the time you, you are not hungry. So it's much easier that when you finish doing sports, you drink a beverage with carbohydrates to favor the glycogen resynthesis then when you that then when you, you because you will not eat most of the people doing sports start to eat three or four hours after that because they are not hungry so this is the reason why normally we we give to them um, a drink i won't say very much about electrolytes because you are much more an expert than me but it's clear that while we are sweating we lose uh, sodium chloride and potassium it's clear that also there is an adaptation that trained people has, uh, have a more diluted sweating sweat than non-trained, but they sweat more, so they produce more sweat when you are trained. So you are losing electrolytes, and this is the reason why we also in include electrolytes in the, in the beverage. What about taste? Why is taste so important? And I think this is also very interesting in regards to the, your question about thirst. Because there are many studies saying that uh, if um, the taste makes a difference of people wanting to drink. So if the beverage we gave to them during sports has a specific taste, they will drink more than if, it, if it, there is no taste. And this is much more important even in children. Children like, uh, for example, they like the orange savor, the orange uh, taste very much. So it's important that, it, that the taste of the beverage is adequate and that people like it. And another aspect that has been in re, uh, investigated and it's also very, very interesting is that the taste can change. When you are sitting, the, the beverage has a flavor, to, a, a flavor to you and while you are doing sports, the taste can be different. So you have to taste the beverage when you are running or doing sports. If, and if you are a competitive athlete, it's very important because maybe it can do that you don't like the beverage. So you have, the taste is very different. It's very, very important. Because taste, this is also a study analyzing this, it's the, it makes people drink and it's the only way of maintaining a water, water balance in some of the sports. If you give them ad libitum to drink, Normally, athletes don't maintain water balance, but if there is a possibility to maintain water balance, is with a beverage with adequate taste. The temperature, I will not go very deep in this. It's when, while performing in the heat, the temperature of the beverage is very important because of uh, gastric emptying. It, fav it favors gastric emptying. That's the reason why if you do sports or you are active while it's hot outside, you should put the, um, the beverage in a, I don't know how you say this in English, a thermos, 
run, is this, uh, this to maintain the temperature of the beverage? A thermo, you, in, a thermo, you say this in English too? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, important because if, if, you if you leave the beverage at uh, the temperature, it will have 30 degrees at the end. So it, it, uh, it will not make the adequate rehydration process. So there are many factors also influencing gastric emptying. This is also one of the reasons because the, the carbohydrate concentration and the adding of sodium, for example, maintains uh, and for the better osmolarity in order that the beverage loses, uh, uh, goes away from the stomach quite early and can do the, uh, the rehydration properly. So now, very briefly, uh, coming to the end, the new perspective. This is what I've been told now and quite fast because I thought it's very important to think again maybe of what we already know and why. Because now there is, and I also liked uh, Ron says his also in his review that now there are some um, some some research is being done in uh, sports physiology related to maybe we can leave the athlete dehydrated. May maybe it's not so important because if we if we perform quite well with two percent, three percent, maybe even with four percent of dehydration. We, the performance is okay, so why should he drink? And that's the reason why the health aspect is also very important. Maybe he can perform well a bit dehydrated, 2%, 3%, but maybe there is already a risk for health. So I think this is very important. And this is one research aspect that I didn't put on the slide, but it's a tendency now to analyze if performance is okay by, while being dehydrated but it makes no sense. Now, why should we leave the athlete dehydrated if we know it's better to be hydrated? Okay, uh, what is new now and what is being researched now in, uh, in regard to this topic? Okay, uh, there is also an additional benefit probably what if you drink a beverage with carbohydrates and electrolyte instead of only water because there are it's being now researched regarding the higher oxidative stress that is produced while being active. You know that mainly in, uh, in elite athletes, after there is um, the immune system uh, decreases in this what we call the open window period, just that is just when you stop doing sports, the immune function goes down, and there are some um, there are some research done that probably the beverage with carbohydrate can prevent this open window function. It's now as sport is being different, more people are getting active because we are telling them, we are telling normal people to be more active because it's very important to prevent obesity. So now more people are doing sports than before, this is true, and also in very different uh, aspects because more people are going for diving, more people are going to the mountains, and also in, it's very important if you go to the mountains and are under hypoxic conditions to be very well hydrated. And sometimes this is also not taken, not being considered. About hyperhydration, you spoke already, there is also some research going on with hyperhydration in sport, if it's better to be hyperhydrated with glycerol, for example. And intravenous hydration in sport is now being banned by the world by the anti-doping with the World Agency for Anti-Doping, because in some sports they are doing intravenous hydration, so they, they banned it. The, Ameri the American Academy of Pediatrics just published a new position state a policy statement, and as I and it's published in the in the in pediatrics, and I think it's very important that uh, you have this uh, paper, because in the I'm finishing already. It's uh, it's two minutes, because uh, in former times there have been some research saying that children are different. Children are different. Thermoregulation is different in children from adults. They sweet less. They um, they don't. Uh, in the, if the temperature is the same, they will get more heat, they don't have to drink so much. Okay, this is now the, the research that has been done in the last years has shown that this is not true. That children 
are, are not less effective, so the term of regulation is more or less the same than in adults already, what I the slides that I showed you about the term of regulation, so they, they are effective, that they have not sufficient cardiovascular capacity for performing sports, that they don't have lower physical exertion tolerance, and that it's very important and this is the same that in adults to be hydrated. So if children do sports also in the heat and are well hydrated, there is no problem with them. But you know that children like, um, has, have sometimes less thirst than uh, adults, the same with elderly, and um, we have to teach them to drink. I think the same when you, when you take your children to doing sports and the teacher teaches tennis, he has to teach the same to drink properly during sports. And sometimes in, in youth sports, I don't know if you are familiar with youth sports, but sometimes youth sports, the tournaments are a, when it's very hot because the adults play in the morning and the children play at 2 o'clock when the adults are having lunch. So probably it's more a problem of schedule to put the tournaments for the young people in the morning or in the afternoon. This is the recommendation similar to adults. And what about the beverage? Normally you say that when you do sports for less than one hour, water could be enough. But it, again, it depends on the intensity. If it's very intense exercise, you need more carbohydrates. So, and there is a quite a consensus if the activity is for more than one hour that for sure you need the beverage. And the last thing I wanted to introduce to you, this is a, a very interesting paper, this is a very small summary, but I wanted to show it to you about the effect of dehydration and rehydration on oxidative stress. I think this is a very interesting research line from the group of González Alonso. We are also very proud of him because he's also from Spain like you introduced us, uh, Ramon y Cajal. And um, I think that it's very interesting that his, uh, the conclusion he came that uh, maybe with a beverage with carbohydrates can prevent um, the, the oxidative damage that maybe is there when uh, free radicals are produced because of the increased intensity. So now I come to my end. It was a, I wanted to, as I told you, to have a very brief overview of what is already known and what is the consensus in, um, in sports and hydration and also what's new and what we should go on. Because I think there is a challenge for, and for also for health that probably the beverage during, uh, the proper beverage during sport and physical activity can prevent from damage. And this is, I think, a very interesting aspect. So the conclusions to my presentation is that there is a consensus. I think there is that dehydration impairs physical and mental performance and is a risk for health, both in endurance exercise, but also in for more than two hours, but also for less than one hour in resistance exercise. That it's important to educate athletes and the technical staff, but also other professionals, like for example, firefighters, military staff or other workers who are working in the sun, for example, or active commuting people to drink during the day, before, during and after exercise. Due to physiological, environmental and other factors, everyone needs to search for his individual hydration scheme and that choosing the ideal beverage with an optimum hydration strategy can be considered beside the physiological need a nutritional ecogenical aid. And that adequate hydration could have additional benefits beyond the classical ones, and I think this is what will come up in the next uh, months and years regarding this research area. So thank you very much. <laughs>